Welcome to City First. you joining us online. Welcome today. Come on, let's lift our voices. Sing together. Here we go. Just one word. Calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word. The darkness has to be true. One touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Come on, in faith we sing today. Just one word. You hear what's broken inside. That's right. Just one word. And you revive every dream. Oh, wake in our hearts today, God. Just one touch. I feel the power of hell. My eyes were open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can't move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's nothing that our God can't do there's not a prince of all we can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Yeah. Come on, let us faith rise up in this place today. Come on, sing it with me. I will. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Come on. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for creating things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Oh, let all agree. Come on in one voice, we declare the faith today. I will believe for greater things. There's no power, power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes the way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Oh, there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall we can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes the way. There's nothing Come on, church, whatever you're believing for today, in faith we sing together. I will believe the greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Sing it again. I will believe the greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. No power like the power of Jesus. Come on, lift up his name. Hello City First Church family. We hope that you had a very Merry Christmas and we are so glad that you decided to join us today at City First. 
If you're new to City First, you are in the right place. Simply text the number that's on the screen and we would love to connect with you. Today, we're gonna to spend some time reflecting on all that God has done in 2021. And so much of what he's done is because of your generosity. You know, every time that we gather together, we pause to receive a free will offering. And today is no different. You can find the ways to participate in the giving on the screen. And when you give back to God through City First Church, your generosity impacts thousands of lives in Jesus' name. I mean, it's really hard to believe that this is the last Sunday of the year. And so if you want to give an end of your offering above and beyond your normal tithes and offerings, you can do so by the 31st. So all of your gifts bring hope to thousands thousands of people around the globe. So let's end this year strong in generosity. And if there's anything that you need prayer for, please let us know by emailing us at prayer at cityfirst.church. And we would love to partner with you in faith. So let's go ahead now and join pastors Lisa and Cameron. And we're gonna look at everything that God has done this year in 2021. Well, hello, What's City up? First Church family. We are so glad that each and every one of you are joining us today at City First Church. Uh, crazy to believe it's the last Sunday of the year. And we hope that everybody had a merry and meaningful Christmas. And we are so excited that we get to spend the next little bit of time together. And it's kind of become a tradition around here at City First that at the end of the year, yep. we pause and we just recap and we reflect reflect on all of the amazing things that God has done. Sometimes we can live so much life, we can forget to pause and give thanks to God for his goodness, for all that he's seen us through. And so I'm here with Pastor Cameron. What's up, y'all? And we are so excited to yes. be able to spend this time together. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited. So you guys go ahead and get ready. Sit back, relax, because it's about to be a crazy ride. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to start off with January of yes. 20. 21. Oh my gosh. We were so glad <laughs> to be out done. of done. Just be done. With 2020. Yes. yes. But who loves the holidays? I love the holidays. Yes, I love do. eating. Yeah. I love relaxing. I love chilling. Yeah. I'm in vacation mode. And yes. the cool thing about January this past year is that we got into a series called Find Your Flow, yes, which is all about understanding how to have a rhythm yes. with God. And that's exactly what I need yep. coming out of a season of resting, yes. vacation, yes. and eating lots of good food. <laughs> so it was really incredible. You guys should check out this clip. Now, flow is a term that is used many times by athletes or musicians or competitors or even gamers or business people who, who they say that when they find flow or they're in their flow, they're performing at an almost perfect level. In fact, psychologists would say that a, a state of flow is when you are hyper-focused on whatever you are doing. You are fully immersed in the activity. In other words, you're all in. You exhibit a high level of performance. And lastly, you experience intense enjoyment while doing so. However, I thought about this idea of flow and I thought, you know what, what would it be like if, if we actually found flow in 2021? What would it be like if, if we had to do certain things to maximize this one and only life that God has given to us, this year that God has given to us that we'll never be able to live again, what would 2021 look like if you found God's flow in your life this year? Now, I realize some of you, the minute I say that, you're like, man, this is a strange week to talk about that, Jer. I mean, there's a lot of challenges going on in life. We have a COVID crisis. We have a political crisis. We have all kinds of things happening in our economy, in people's health. I mean, I, I understand that, but, but notice something. The only place where you can really find flow is in challenging circumstances. Like, like Michael Jordan found his flow when he was coming up against very skilled players. A musician finds her flow when she's trying to write a song, but yet the page is blank and there are no notes on it yet. You see, a businessman finds his flow when the competition seems to be dominating the market. What I'm saying is, is that you don't need flow when things are easy. You actually are in a flow state when things are difficult, challenging, confusing, and hard. So this month, 
I want us to talk about finding our flow in Jesus in 2021. Well, what an amazing wow. message that was. And then after January, we went right into the month of February. And every February, Pastor Jeremy unveils a theme for the church. And it's something that we always look forward to. What is it going to be? And this past year, the theme was iconic. Mm -hmm. And that was such a strong theme. And we heard about having iconic faith. And I remember a message that Pastor Jeremy spoke when he was talking about having iconic faith. And it was so good. And we're going to watch a little clip of it again right now. An icon is made in the likeness of the greater thing. If it doesn't look like the thing is supposed to represent, it creates a lot of confusion. Like, for example, how about if I were to look at you and say, this is the icon of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, right here. Now you'd look at me and go, no, that's not a good icon. Because actually the Golden Gate Bridge doesn't look anything like that, that looks like the Sydney Harbor Bridge in Australia. And, and I'd say, no, 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 you got to understand this right here. This, this is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's, it's the icon for the Golden Gate Bridge. And you go, no, no, no. It created a lot of confusion. You would say this, you say, Jer, it's a bridge, but it doesn't look like the Golden Gate Bridge. And here, here culture, we have a problem. Here's where we have a problem in our culture. We have people who say they're Christians, but they look nothing like Jesus. So yeah, they're a Christian, but they're a poor representation of the greater thing because their life doesn't look anything like what it's supposed to be modeled after. So you know what's happening? Christians are losing influence in our culture, and it doesn't have much to do with the fact of who is in the White House or not, or who is, you know, in front of the TV, you know, talking to people or not, or who the influencers are on Instagram or not. It has everything to do with a bunch of people that call themselves Christians, but unfortunately they look nothing like the greater thing that they're supposed to represent. That's where we're losing traction in our culture. And I, I realize that's, that's super controversial to say that, but it's really true because this is the thing. Christianity throughout the 2,000 years that it's been around since Jesus died and rose again and went to heaven, Christianity has never rose and fall, fell upon who is in power, but rather it would go up or down based upon how true its followers were to being a correct and accurate icon of Jesus. I mean, that's, that's, that's really, really what influences culture. Because again, if you want to have influence, create an image that compels people to change. Create an image. I believe some of you already know what the theme is for 2021. You probably are like, okay, yeah, you're even literally wearing the hoodie, right? Iconic. We are going to be iconic in 2021. That is our theme, iconic. Yeah, you can give that a round of applause. What a great message that was. And then we rolled right into Vision Sunday. Yes. And vision's so important. Like even the Bible talks about without vision, people perish. Like we have to have a vision for our lives. And that's one of the things I love about Pastor Jeremy is yes. he's full of yes. vision. I love Vision Sunday because it's the time where I come with my journal. Yeah. I come ready and I know I'm about to get spiritually fed. You know, that's also the time where we sang the song, the My World Needs You. It was led by our homegirl, Stephanie. It was a really beautiful moment. Check this out.
Okay, so you remember last year yeah. we did our first food distribution. That's right. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. I remember being so excited because yeah. I thought to myself, like, this is what the church is all yeah. about. We're about meeting spiritual needs, but yeah. also tangible, tangible. needs. Yeah. So it was so cool to have everybody together. We're all in this giant parking lot. Yes. There's so many cars there. We're yeah. bundled up. We're ready to go. Yeah. It was so fun. It was amazing. And yeah, the very first time we did it was right after COVID had hit in 2020. And we had this huge convoy of yes. hope truck full of food. And I remember we're like, okay, that was awesome that we did that. Well, let's do it again. Well, let's do it again. Well, let's yeah. do it again. And now it's been almost two years later yes, yes. and we haven't stopped doing food distributions and we're not going to stop doing food distributions as long as there are hungry people. Yeah. We as a church want to be a part of yeah. meeting their needs. And it's been amazing. We've gotten to pray with so many people at food distributions. We've had people who are now part of the City First family serving on serve teams yes. that yeah. showed up because of a food distribution in the parking lot, but it brought them into the church. Yes. And so it's been phenomenal. And we've given a away nearly two million, million. pounds oh of gosh. food which is incredible and that's because city first of your generosity no matter where you're joining us from when you give back to god through city first church you're part of feeding people physically and also spiritually and so we're just going to take a moment and look at just a quick recap of what god has done through our food distribution efforts I'm here with Yvette from the Northern Illinois Food Bank, one of our partner organizations here in the Rockford region. And we also partner with Midwest Community Food Bank in Cape Coral, Florida, all for one purpose, to feed those who are hungry. And because of your generosity, City First Church, we have been able to give away nearly 2 million pounds of food, feeding over 27,000 families, which is around 116,000 individuals. So that is 1.6 million meals that we've been able to give in Illinois and in Florida. So we know that food is medicine. And so we thank you City First for all the work that you've done with us throughout the pandemic to feed families in need. Wow. I absolutely love our church, man. I love what we get to be a part yeah. of. And you know, with all the things that took place, eventually we got to April and yes. April was fantastic. Yeah. One, because we had Easter. Yes. I love Easter. I love candy. Easter goes together. It's a <laughs> beautiful Jesus. combination. And Jesus. But there's also candy. But it was, it was really cool. It was really yes. cool. And I love it because it's all about hope. And yes, you know, even right. following that, we did the Spread Hope Challenge where we encourage people in, in our church yeah. to be the hands and the feet of yeah. Jesus and to practice that every day in our normal lives, where we go to work at, yep. where we live, where we go to school at, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Needless to say, God did incredible things through people and with people. Check this out. Easter is all about hope. And this week, City First Church hosted a Spread Hope Challenge. We went into our surrounding communities to show light and extend the love of Jesus in fun and practical ways. So let's check it out. We are out here today at the Rockford Police Department District 3 building and administration building. And today we get to bless the officers by showing up to their roll call uh, and bless them with some treats and some amazing cookies from Mary's Market. So thank you to Mary's Market for helping to make today possible. Hey City First, um, just on behalf of your generosity, we have the opportunity today to bless Ellis Elementary School with some equipment for recess and also on those rainy days that we get here in Rockford to be able to have some board games. We're also thankful for the Easter bags that every kid went home with today and the Easter Bunny bringing smiles to all the students and staff at Ellis Elementary School. City First Church, you have been beyond generous and we thank you sincerely from Ellis Elementary School. School, ready to bless some teachers with some donuts this morning. We're here for the Spread Hope Challenge and we're so excited. Hey guys, we're out here at the Texas Roadhouse. We're partnering with them today to spread some hope to our local fire department, to bring them some food today, just to say thank you so much for all that you do. And we're inviting them to Easter. We're so excited. 
thanks for everything that you guys do. So much is unseen, most of it's unseen. So what small thing we can do just to bring you guys a meal? For firefighters, first responders, you know, we're always here for you. But a gesture like this goes a long way, so I hope, uh, hope you all know that we appreciate it. Yep, Thank absolutely. You. Hope has come to us, but it does not end with us. Let's keep hope alive this Easter and beyond. Hope now, hope always. Okay, so you can't get through a year without talking about Original yes. Women's Conference, okay? Original Women's Conference is the one time where the women just take over <laughs> this place. I'm telling you, every inch of all of our campuses yes. is just covered, That's and it. it's so incredible because yes. I love the way that the yes. women in our church lead, yes. worship, and pray. Yes. So please relive this with us and check out this video. And in the middle of that tonight, I just want to remind you that God loves you and that God has this, an invitation for you. He has an invitation for you. You know, the God of the universe created you and he made you and he loves you so much. And here's the common verse we know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, right? And we know this, we know this but it shows his deep love for us. And all throughout scripture, you guys, there is this theme. There's this theme of God continually reaching and reaching and reaching for his people. It's all throughout scripture. He's saying, I made you, I designed you, I made you Imago Dei, not so just that you can look a certain way or be a certain way because you were designed and created for relationship with God. That was amazing. Original is one of my favorite times of the year. I love how Pastor Jen leads that ministry so so many people can come together. Yeah. And April was also significant because we launched the Pando app yes. at God yes. Behind Bars. And so many people are familiar with God Behind Bars. We have two locations, physical locations, Hardy Correctional Center and Dixon Correctional Center. And I've actually been able to go and visit our church location inside of Dixon Correctional Center before. And man, and those men, hello everybody at Dixon and Hardy, love Jesus. And it's amazing because even though COVID was very difficult for many people, there's also some good things that yeah. came out of it. And one of those things was the launch of the Pando app. And so what this says is it's a tablet that inmates are able to have where they can watch churches and especially City First Church. And that launched this past April. And since it did, there's been over 100,000 people who have watched City First Church via the Pando app. And so we just wanna take a moment and celebrate how God continues to spread the good news of Jesus using technology that are part of God Behind Bars. Through the recent launch of the Pando app, our partnership with God Behind Bars has expanded past our physical locations of Hardy and Dixon Correctional Centers. Since its launch in February of this year, 141,765 inmates have heard the good news of Jesus through City First Church. Okay, guys, so then in May, yeah. we got into a series called Vintage Jesus. Oh, I love that series. It was spectacular. That's it was so, so cool. First of all, I have to say the artwork was absolutely was. amazing. That's right. Love the theme. Yes. But what was really cool about it was that we looked at the parables that Jesus taught, yeah. and we looked at the stories and the conversations that Jesus had with people. Yeah. And not only did we get to go back and look at that, but we got yeah. to bring the truth out of that yep. and bring it into our lives to yeah. see how it's relevant. And yeah. I thought that that was just powerful, yeah. seeing people looking at these stories and having moments with yeah. their friends and their families or even better their life yes. groups and Absolutely. seeing that truth still be relevant it was incredible and you know what was also cool about it is that we had our legendary pastor Ryan Leak yes. with us and he closed this series with an amazing message check this out let's say that this is the shore over here Jesus says go home the disciples go out they sail out they in the boat they find themselves in a storm they're freaking out all of a sudden they see Casper. No, they see Jesus. Okay, it's a friendly ghost. Okay, they see the ghost over there. They say, oh, it's a ghost. Jesus says, nah, it's me. We good. Peter wants to play truth or dare and says, all right, let's, let's, get on, let's go ahead and try and walk on water and go see Jesus. He gets out of the boat, starts walking towards Jesus, almost drowns, almost dies. Jesus reaches out his hand and says, why did you just have so much little faith? And then Matthew fast forwards the story. and says, when they climb back into the boat, 
That's when the wind stopped. Which, if Peter walked an unknown distance in a storm, almost drowned, Jesus saved him, and the storm didn't stop until they got back in the boat, that would mean that Jesus and Peter walked back through the storm together. The winds and waves are still going. And Jesus is still walking with them. And it didn't stop until they got back into the boat. I have to wonder who in the building and who on the internet has found themselves walking through a storm alone. What Peter found out on the Sea of Galilee was that Jesus walks with his followers through storms. Even in our doubts, Jesus walks with us anyway. If you find yourself going through a storm, don't go through it without Jesus. I want to encourage you this weekend to invite God to your doubts. Man, I love that message. Love Pastor Ryan. Always does such a great job, brings such a great word. And then we got into June, which yep. was summertime. Yes. We're all thinking about summertime. If you're living in the Midwest right now, yep. we're thinking of warmer weather. If you're in Cape, <laughs> we're jealous. All our Floridians. And then in June, we had a water baptism celebration. Yes. I love that so much. I love that we get to have this moment with people. But what's also cool is that it's a very private moment, but yeah. it's also public. Yeah. And it boosts our faith. Yes. And it takes us to the next level where we get to be yeah. public with our relationship with yeah. God. So seeing people uh, choose to be a part of that this summer was absolutely incredible. Yes. And it was so moving. And then watching where they are now, yes. so cool. It's Hands amazing. Down. It is. It's one of my favorite times of the year. And we actually do this pretty frequently throughout the year. We did in the summer. We, um, you know, do them every couple months and every time I just find myself crying because every person who gets baptized you know and like there's so much symbolism in water baptism yes. if you've yes. never thought about it before it really is when people go under the water it's representing that the old life is gone it's mm. buried and then when you get up out of the water it's symbolic of the new life in Christ that yes. people have and so love water baptism celebration and what's been really fun to see is that people are coming from all over to be water baptized Yes. We have people driving hours to a physical location. Even at our Spring Creek location, we had someone fly in mm -hmm. all the way from Belize to be water mm -hmm. baptized. Yep. And so we want to take a second and hear a little bit of Shalou's story, who's part of our City First Anywhere family. My name is Shalou O'Brien. I live in Belize and I'm a part of the, the City First family. I mean, that's how I feel. I, I feel like City First has allowed me to just grow in my faith even so far away, like thousands of miles away, I'm able to tune in every week. So I'm just continuing to grow in my journey and, and I just thank this whole city first, Pastor Jen, Pastor Jeremy. It's, it's like a family that I'm just meeting. I'm just thankful. I'm just so thankful. Okay, so then after that, we went into a series called Summer Strong. I love that you know, series. And it was really cool because yes. we were all talking about getting ready for the yeah. fall, getting out of that vacation yes. mode, kind of getting, you know, prepared yep. for what God has for us next. It helped us with our expectations. Yes. It's helped us with our energy, all that fun stuff. And it was really incredible, and, you know. And after that, we did a, a really cool moment, one of my favorites, which is Superhero Sunday. I love Superhero it's Sunday. It's so incredible. Yeah. You get these kids and you inspire them yes. and you show them what it means to actually be a hero. And it's not about our talents. It's not about what we have to yeah. offer, but it's about our heart what God has given yeah. us. And I love that so much. It's so amazing. And maybe if someone's joining us and you're new to City First Church and you're wondering, what is Superhero Sunday all about? Yes. Superhero Sunday is really a celebration of our Champions Club ministry, which is a ministry for our individuals, kids, young adults that have special needs. And so on this Sunday, we just pause and we just get to celebrate how amazing they are. We get to celebrate their families, their parents, their caretakers, and how God has designed them with such such amazing gifts, beautiful personalities, and uh, what's one of my favorite things about City First Church is we're a place where everyone's welcome, everybody has a home, um, no matter who you are or what maybe you've been going through. And so we want to take a moment and hear from one of the incredible families of our Champions Club ministry. 
When we got pregnant with our first baby, we planned like any other couple would plan, where you, you ha basically have a mental idea of how things are gonna work and how things are gonna play out. Flash forward to, to 18 months old, and Ethan was diagnosed to be developmentally delayed along with PDD and secondary autism. It means that he's highly sensitive to stimulant environments. The lifestyle that we had at that time didn't adapt well to a child that had those needs. It was a season of life that we never saw coming. And when you have a special needs child, it's easy in the world to feel like a burden, to feel like your child may be too much for someone to handle or people may not know how to handle them. So we found ourselves really seeking out and searching for a place that we could just go and worship. We had heard about Champions Club at City First Church and we had heard about Superhero Weekend and we were wondering, is this really the best time to come on our first weekend? So we talked to some friends that had attended City First and they said, absolutely, this is the perfect weekend for you to come. As soon as we walked in, we, we felt celebrated and that he was truly, he was welcomed here in a way we've never experienced before. I think City First has done a fabulous job on removing the fears that a parent with special needs would normally have. Our families have their own parking where we have our own entrance to come into, so they don't need to walk through the big parking lot and the big entrance, and they come straight in and they're greeted by, by amazing volunteers and their, their coach. Every child gets a buddy their coach. Ethan every week is like, where my coach at? <laughs> and he, he, he knows that they're there for him. And these rooms are not like a typical, you know, church room or a worship atmosphere, but these rooms are adapted to these, these kids. Instead of adapting the kids to the rooms, the rooms and the atmosphere at Champions Club are adapted to these kids. So they come in and they have a strategic plan. They know exactly what's gonna happen. Being able to come to church and fully release and fully be vulnerable and not worry about if he is okay or, if, or what's going on because I know these people here, they, they normally handle them better than I do. There are so many families that I know that don't attend worship or don't get the healing word of God ever because they don't want to be a burden to, to you know, a church or they don't want to be stressed out while they're in service. Um, and I can honestly tell you that my husband and I would not be where we are today without this church and without Champions Club. So every year we do a backpack drive, yes. you know, and this past year we did something incredible. We gave out over 2,000 backpacks. 2,000 backpacks. Right, 2,000 backpacks. It's amazing. It is. It's so incredible because it helps set up students for the year yeah. to come. And it also gives this, this sensation that like City First Church yeah. has your back. That's like right. we support you. Yep. We have your back and literally we're here to help you. Yeah. And I think it's incredible because when you can get a student yeah. to know that they are loved, yep and that they have, they're destined for yeah. greatness and a purpose, who knows what can happen after yeah. that. That's amazing. And what I love about it too is it doesn't just affect the student, but also the parents. Yeah. You know, if, if there's a parent who's going, how am I going to pull all of this together, get all the yeah. resources, and just to know, hey, there's a church in our community who has that for yeah. my, my kid. You know, not only is the kid blessed with the whole family. And so yeah. I love that we get to be a part of it. It's such a true what Jesus says, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes. Like I find so much yes. joy in being able to give. And that's always a highlight of the summer. And this summer, not only did we get to do backpacks and we had Summer Strong, but then we had an incredible message series. And Pastor Jeremy talked about life with an empty chair. Yes. It's an intriguing title. And if you missed it, hey, you get to watch a little bit of it right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. In other words, someone in your world needs to be invited to the table of your life. In fact, most of you are here today because someone brought you to their table. Someone said, hey, show up on Sunday. I'll save you a seat. 
someone said, hey, you want to come over, neighbor? You want to come over and have like a cookout in the backyard with me? Someone said, hey, listen, do you, do you want to come to Life Group? Someone else said, hey, listen, you want to come to Vive? We're really doing this great thing. You want to come to summer camp with me? See, I'm telling you, someone put out an empty chair for you and invited you to sit down and all of a sudden join their life. And guess who also was sitting at the table of their life? Jesus. So when you sat down at the table of their life, you met their Savior, their best friend, Jesus, who is also at that table. And guess what? Now you know Jesus. And it'd be very easy for all of us, including myself as a pastor, it'd be very easy for us to just have a closed table. It's reserved, right? You ever gone to a restaurant and you're like, you're like, hey, I didn't put in a reservation. Um, are there any empty tables? Nope, all reserved. We can't fit you. You have to go somewhere else. See, it's easy for us to do that as Christians. We could always just have a reserved table. Now it's just me and my four and no more, us seven all the way to heaven. We're just going to talk about prophecies, and we're going to talk about the Greek and the Hebrew, and we're going to talk about this and that and everything. And here's the thing. There's a world out here that is going through the valley of the shadow of death, and they need a table, but they need a place at the table. They need an invite to the table. Are you thinking about who is not at the table yet? Okay, so one of our most incredible and creative yes. series out of the entire year yes. is at the movies, super anticipated. It brings the entire church together. Yes. And in this series, it feels like you're in your living room yes. with your family watching TV, super incredible. It's amazing. And I mean, you get popcorn at church Come and on. there's superheroes and yes. characters and yes. there's movie sets. It's so much fun. Okay, and Pastor Cam, what is one of your all time favorite favorite movie. Okay, so we actually covered it. Ooh. Pastor Jeremy spoke about it, but it's Black Panther. Okay. Um, it's about a king and yes. it's about the weight and the integrity that it takes to be a king, but also not that, but knowing that you belong to a yeah. kingdom. That's and it was a cool principle. I love that movie so much. That's awesome. I thought when you said we covered it, it was going to be The Goonies was your favorite <laughs> movie. I'm just kidding. I didn't think it was going to be The it's, Goonies. It's up there. It's up there. But we had a wide range of movies that were yes. covered from Black Panther to the Goonies, mm -hmm. and one of my favorite weeks is when Pastor Jeremy spoke on Apollo 13. Yes. Has such a great visual example, um, and we want to show it to you now in case you missed it. Let's go ahead and check this out. And sometimes in life, we encounter problems where we got to quit complaining about the problem. We just got to go, it is what it is. And I got to start using what I got to fix it, right? Because God has given you resource. He's given you brilliance. He's given you a mind. He's given you connections. He's given you all of these things as you pray. And he wants you to now start piecing these things together for a solution. David could have just literally went, well, all I got is a slingshot. How am I going to conquer Goliath? I just have a slingshot. I don't have a sword. I don't have a shield. I don't have armor. In fact, he even tried that and didn't work, right? All Moses had was a rod, like a staff. And yet, that rod God used to part the Red Sea. Does that make sense? Like, like last week I talked about this, but the boy only had two fish and five loaves of bread. And yet, that's what God used. It was like the equivalent of saying, well, God, I got a sock. <laughs> this is it. And here's my point. When unexpected challenges arise, take what you already have, leverage it for a solution, and then let God do the rest. Does that make sense? Let God do the rest. You have to approach your challenges the way that they are, not the way that you wish they would be. Okay, so now where are all my music lovers at? Okay, okay, put your hands up. I know you're out there. <laughs> because this October, we released our very first yes. EP. It was really special yes. and really cool because it was the heartbeat yep. of our church translated through worship yes. and songs. It was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Sam and Kristen and the whole team, um, you, you said it so perfectly. They captured the heart of our church, the heart of God, and then they put it in music. And yes. hey, if you haven't listened to the City First EP yet, make sure Listen you do that. Um, you can find it anywhere where music is streamed. I don't know if you're a Spotify person or Apple Music person. It's there. It's what are there. you, Cam? Spotify, Spotify Apple 
Team Music. Spotify. I'm Team Spotify too. Team Spotify over um, here. But go ahead. It's on YouTube, wherever you listen to music, and make sure that you check it out. And it was so fun to be a part of it. We had the live recording yes. in August at our Spring Creek location, and then it was released in October. And all of the songs just carry so much heart yes. and so much meaning. And right now, we just um, got stats not too long ago that City First Worship is being streamed in over 60 wow. countries. So what's happening here is being spread literally around the globe. Yes. And yes. it's just amazing that we all get to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And so when we first launched the EP, I know Pastor Sam had recorded a video that just captured a little bit of his heart, a little, a little bit of what he's praying for for everybody. And so we're gonna watch Pastor Sam's message to us and then listen to one of the original songs, God Will Make A Way. All right, uh, ready? Yep, yeah, ready. This project, Anthem, it started in the heart of our senior pastor and from his leadership and from his vision, uh, we took that spark and just tried to fan it into flame and chase after uh, what God was doing in our church and how can we honor that heart and bring it into a song. It's been amazing to see how God has met us um, from the writing room all the way to uh, an experience where we're gathered together singing. These are songs of declaration. These are songs of testimony. Uh, these are songs believing in faith that God is still moving, still active on the good days and the bad days and everything in between. Uh, really the heart of City First Worship is to just help connect people to Jesus. And so uh, as you listen to Anthem, just pray that your faith is built.
Wow. Isn't it hard to believe that we just wrapped up majority of the year? Yeah. And in fact, we're still in December right, right now, you know, and this past month we got to be a part of a lot of cool things. Yes. You know, one of my favorite things is Christmas hope mm -hmm. and Christmas hope is when we get to bless elementary schools yeah. around our surrounding areas and our campuses. Yeah. And we got to give these kids gifts. Yeah. And you know what's cool about this is that some of the gifts that these students will receive that day yeah are the only gifts that they will get for Christmas. Wow. Think about that. Because of the generosity yeah. of this church, mm. we got to bless students so with good. gifts to put underneath their Christmas tree. Yeah. How spectacular and how amazing and beautiful that is to get to do that for them. Yeah, and it reminds us what Christmas really is all about. It's not about just giving, but it's about the gift of Jesus yeah. and that we get to be an extension of that hope to students. Mm. And so all the students that receive gifts also are hearing the message of Jesus and that they are so loved. Mm -hmm. And Christmas is such a special time. And, you know, I'm praying that each and every person who's joining us had a great Christmas. Um, maybe you didn't have the best Christmas or maybe this year was rough, but I'm reminded of a verse that talks about how we are to give thanks in all circumstances. And Pastor Jeremy always says the Greek word for all is all. It means all circumstances. <laughs> and yes. so, you know, no matter what we've been through, there's always something to give mm. thanks for. And even though we're almost at the end of December, we're not quite there yet, which means we have a couple more days left yeah. in 2021. Yeah. And we all get to decide what to do with them. Yes. That in the last couple of days of 2021, that we would be focused on God, that we would have hearts that are full of gratitude, yes. that we would have eyes and ears that are tuning in to God and who he is and what he has for each and every one of us. And so we wanna take a moment and we just wanna pray for everybody who's joining us today, that we would have God's perspective these last couple of days and that we would have a deep and personal relationship with him. So let me pray for us and then we're gonna hear one more song. God, I thank you for each and every person who's part of City First Church. For everyone who's watching right now, I thank you that you are with them that you are near to them, that you care about them. And I pray that we all would just be focused in on you and that because of the gift of your son, Jesus, we have so much to be grateful for. So I pray that you would bless each and every person. Where people are in need, we pray for provision. Where people are maybe experiencing physical difficulties, we pray for healing. And we pray, God, that each and every one of us would know how much you love us. And in your name, Amen. Amen. Well, we wow. love you, City First Church family. We're going to wrap up with one more worship song because I can't think of a better way to end this year than to giving God praise. Pastor Cam, it's been so much fun. Yes, so incredible. Yeah. God has done so many incredible things this year, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do next yes. year. So join us in worship, and yeah. until then, we'll see you next year. Happy New Year. See